I love being a master of stealth. Emerging from the shadows to cut down your unsuspecting enemies. In Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, there is one master of stealth in the Stabomancer. Now combining the Spore Warden with the Stabomancer, you can create some epic builds. And there are a ton of builds to go around. In this video, I'm going to give you one of those epic builds of the Stabomancer Spore Warden with a focus on the Stabomancer. In this video, I'll first go through the overview of the skill allocation, then I'll get into the stat allocation, then I'll get into some gameplay, and I'll talk about why that stat and skill allocation is amazing, and I'll also give you a couple pieces of equipment that are absolutely important for the build to be even more epic. And then at the end of the video, I'll get into the equipment that I love utilizing on the build. Though they're just recommendations, there are a lot of combinations on this build that you can use. Before I get into it, I do want to say if you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more Tiny Tina's Wonderlands content. I do a bunch of other RPG content, so feel free to check those out as well. Without further ado, let's get into the skills of the Stabomancer Spore Warden with the focus on the Stabomancer. Let's talk about the skills for our Stabomancer Spore Warden build with the Stabomancer focus. So Stabomancer is going to give us Dirty Fighting, which increases our critical hit chance by 30%. And the Spore Warden is going to give us our Mushroom Companion. The main ability is going to be from the Shadows. The Fate Maker can enter Stealth, which turns us invisible. Every hit is going to be a critical hit, but critical hits are going to deal reduced damage. Now I want to talk about the Spore Warden tree first. We're not focused on this and we're only investing in three skills. The first one being Eagle Eye. We're maxing this out and it's going to increase our gun damage and gun handling. The next is going to be Bullseye, which we're maxing out again. And our gun critical hit chance, as well as our companion's critical hit chance, are both going to be increased. Of course, this works nicely with our Dirty Fighting also increasing our critical hit chance. Finally, we have Medicinal Mushroom. This is going to allow our Mushroom Companion to come try and revive us when we enter Save Your Soul. I like to think of this as a get out of jail free card. So we have 11 points invested in our Spore Warden tree. Now let's go over into the bread and butter, our Stabomancer tree, where most of our focus is going to be. First we have Arsenal. Our melee damage, spell damage, and gun damage are all going to be increased. Next in that first row is going to be Potent Poisons. Status effect damage and status effect duration are both going to be increased. This works really nicely with exploit their weakness. Whenever the Fate Maker applies a status effect to an enemy, the affected enemy takes increased damage from all sources for a duration, so that works really nicely with potent poisons. Next is Swift Death. While moving, the Fate Maker gains increased damage dealt. And the faster you move, the greater these bonuses are going to be. Of course, in the Chaos Chamber, a lot of enemies are coming. So you're going to be moving a lot. So Swift Death is going to be great for that. Next is Nimble Fingers. Whenever the Fate Maker deals melee damage, remember that melee damage, his fire rate and spell damage are increased for a duration. Next, Sneak Attack. Critical hit damage is increased. So we're increasing our critical hit damage even more. That's going to be maxed out as well as Nimble Fingers is going to be maxed out. Then we have Elusive. The Fate Maker can now shoot and sprint at the same time. The Fate Maker gains a chance to evade incoming damage while moving. The faster he moves, the greater the bonus. Elusive works really well with our Swift Death that is also maxed out. Because you're going to be moving with Swift Death, that works really well with Elusive. Next, we're going to be maxing out 1,000 Cuts. Critical hit... Grants increased damage dealt for a duration. We're of course dealing critical hits all of the time. So we want to deal that extra damage from a thousand cuts. And finally, Executioner's Blade. Gun and spell critical hits have a chance to create an ethereal blade. We're dealing critical hits all of the time, so that's really nice. We're going to get an ethereal blade above a target that will impale them after a short delay. Ethereal blades deal melee damage. 
based on the Fate Maker's equipped melee weapon. Now that's extremely important because that works nicely with Nimble Fingers. Whenever the Fate Maker deals melee damage, his fire rate and spell damage are increased for a duration. So that works really nicely. We're dealing melee damage. We have a 20% chance to summon that Ethereal Blade with every gun and spell critical hit. So we're going to be summoning that a lot. And we're going to combine that with Nimble Fingers to increase our fire rate and spell damage. So now that we've talked about the skills, let's get into the stats of our Stabomancer Spore Warden. The main focuses of our Stabomancer Spore Warden are going to be Strength and Wisdom. Strength is going to increase our Fate Maker's critical hit damage. We're going to be dealing critical hits non-stop. We already went over the skills that showed our critical hit chance is increased massively. So we want to deal as much critical hit damage as possible. We're also focusing a lot on status effects and status effect damage. So increasing wisdom so our status effect damage is as high as possible is going to be important as well. So those are going to be the two that we want to max out. The third that we're going to invest the rest of our points into is going to be dexterity, which is going to increase our critical hit chance. Again, we want to deal critical hits as much as possible. So increasing our critical hit chance is just a no brainer. Now that we've gone over the stats for our fate maker, let's get into some more gameplay and talk about the build and a couple of pieces of equipment that you absolutely need for this build. Let's now talk about the skills and skill combinations and why this Stabomancer Spore Worm build is absolutely epic. Again, we're focusing on the Stabomancer and dealing damage from the shadows as well as our gun damage and critical hits. Let's start talking about the Spore Worm tree with Eagle Eye. This is pretty straightforward. We're going to be dealing increased gun damage by 20% in increased gun handling, allowing us to maneuver our gun around the battlefield a little bit easier. So this can work nicely when we are in the shadows so we can hit our target more easily. And of course, gun critical hit damage is a percentage of our gun damage. So dealing increased gun damage is going to be nice for the build. Then we go to Bullseye, which we always hit crits inside of our in the shadows. But outside, we don't. So increasing our gun critical hit chance, investing all five in Bullseye, is going to be a really nice additive to this Stabomancer Spore Warden build. And of course, our companion getting crits is just going to be an added bonus. Now last but not least is our quote-unquote get-out-of-jail-free card in our Medicinal Mushroom. Of course, if we go into Save Your Soul, playing on the higher chaoses, it's bound to happen. Our mushroom is going to attempt to save us. This has saved me numerous times, and it may save you as well, but you're probably better at the game than I am, so maybe not. Now let's talk about our Stabomancer side of the build, where we are investing the majority of our points, and we're focusing this build. And I'm actually going to start at the end of the tree, almost end of the tree, with a thousand cuts, where our critical hits grant a plus 1% increased damage dealt per stack for 12 seconds. So that works really well with the Eagle Eye and Bullseye that we just talked about. First, with Bullseye, we're increasing our gun critical hit chance. And of course, with a thousand cuts, critical hits grant a plus one increased damage dealt. And our damage dealt is plus 1% increase. So it's going to be increased off of the gun damage we're already dealing. So increasing our gun damage is only going to increase that damage further. Now, of course, earlier in the tree, we have Arsenal increased fully, increasing our gun damage as well as our melee and spell damage. But of course, we're really focused on gun damage and we're also dealing a lot of spells as well. And we're going to be dealing a lot of melee damage as seen at the end of our tree with Executioner's Blade. Gun and spell critical hits back to our critical hits have a 20% chance to create an ethereal blade above the target that will impale enemies after a short delay 
Ethereal Blades deal melee damage. So that's very important because Arsenal, we're increasing our melee damage. So that Executioner's Blade is going to have increased damage per the Arsenal. So the Arsenal is increasing damage output with everything we do. Now, furthermore, we're going to have Nimble Fingers on top of that. Whenever the Fate Maker deals melee damage, back to that melee damage. So even if you're not a player who utilizes your sword very much, with Executioner's Blade, you're still going to be dealing out a lot of melee damage. So with Nimble Fingers, we're dealing more melee damage, which increases our fire rate and spell damage. So that's awesome as well, increasing our fire rate so we can dole out damage more quickly and increasing our spell damage as well every time we deal melee damage and because of the executioner's blade we're going to be dealing melee damage a lot because we have a 20 percent chance to deal that executioner's blade with gun and spell critical hits so now we have sneak attack <laughs> of course we are a sneaky character with our stab a man so we're just increasing our critical hit damage even more so we're back to focusing on that. Now let's talk about Swift Death. While moving, the Fate Maker gains 10% increased damage dealt. Well, we're going to be moving a lot in Chaos Rounds if you haven't been in the Chaos Chamber, which I'll ask if you've been living under a rock, not really playing Tiny Tina's. But you're going to be moving a lot in the Chaos Chamber. A lot of enemies come. You're not going to be static very often. So you're going to be dealing a lot of increased damage dealt because you're going to be moving a lot then that also goes with elusive because the fate maker can not only shoot and sprint at the same time but you also get a plus 10 percent chance to evade incoming damage which is going to help us out defensively a little bit this isn't the most defensive build that you can get but at least you can get a little bit of extra defense to help keep you alive a little bit longer and now we go into our final few skills that i absolutely love for this build that play really well with each other potent poisons and exploit their weakness potent poisons is going to allow us to increase the status effect damage and status effect duration but that works really well with exploit their weakness because the fate maker when applying a status effect to an enemy that enemy takes increased damage so that plays really well with the rest of our build in just dealing that increased damage dealt to our enemies. So now, one piece of equipment that you absolutely need for this build, or at least one that I'm recommending, I found that it has really made this build that much better, is going to be the Cape of Tides. Now what the Cape of Tides does is you have a 25% chance on a crit to soak an enemy. Again, going back to dealing crits, we're going to be able to have a chance to soak our enemies. And what soaking enemies does is it allows the Fate Maker to deal increased damage to soaked enemies with shock and freeze. So we're going to be focusing on dealing shock and freeze damage to our enemies, soaking them via our crits, and then dealing shock and freeze damage so they can take 150% increased damage from both Shock and Freeze. That's crucial to this build because we're dealing out more damage and we're dealing that status effect damage that we have a few skills invested into so we can deal even more damage to our enemies. Now, of course, the Cape of Tides does have a drawback with dealing less fire damage, but we're going to be focused on dealing that Shock and Freeze damage. Speaking of shock and freeze damage, there are going to be two weapons that I highly recommend utilizing for this build because they deal the damage that we need, or at least if you get the right version, but they can also deal even more damage when used correctly. So first is going to be the sword explosion. You're going to have to get this with either freeze or shock damage, but the sword explosion is absolutely fantastic for this build being a Torg weapon. So if you utilize the sticky damage, you can increase the damage dealt to your enemies exponentially. 
Stuck swords increase damage dealt by 30% for each stuck sword in your enemy when utilizing the sword explosion. If you get a frost or shock sword explosion, you're going to be dealing even more damage to soaked enemies, to enemies when you're in your stealth mode. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. So I highly recommend utilizing the sword explosion. Now, a couple of other guns, at least one that I absolutely love utilizing for this build, is going to be the Auto Magic. The Auto Magic is an absolutely fantastic gun. Again, this is a gun that can come in any damage type, so I recommend getting Freeze or Shock. But this gun can completely tear through enemies. It's a fantastic gun to have. And utilizing the shock or freeze damage can just completely tear through your enemies to a point where rounds in the chaos chamber are going to be insanely quick. Now the final piece that I do recommend for equipment that you're going to be utilizing for this build is going to be an amulet. Now what this amulet is going to do is it's going to allow us that when we do cast a spell it reduces our action skill cooldown and that's going to be the thurge amulet so the thurge on spell cast you get minus 20 percent action skill cooldown what's important about this is that from the shadows is a pretty long cooldown in general we want to be invisible as much as possible because not only does this give us unlimited crits while we're in from the shadows but enemies aren't going to be able to track and hit us as long as we aren't in their radius but this is going to allow us to get our action skill back faster so thurge is going to be insanely important on this build so now that we've talked about the must-have equipment and why this skill combination of the Stabomancer skill tree, what we've invested in, and the Sporeworn skill tree, what we've invested in, is absolutely epic. Let's get into the other equipment that I'm utilizing on this build. So, let's go over the weapons and gear I have on my Stabomancer Sporeworn build. The melee weapon is going to be important, so pay attention to what you're using. I have the Diamond Guard, and the Diamond Guard is melee attacks deal random elemental damage and increased status effect application chance and status effect damage. That's going to be extremely important because we're focused on dealing status effects on this build. Now for our weapons, we're going to start with the auto magic that I talked about earlier that I highly recommend utilizing for this build. It's going to be dealing lightning damage, which is great with combination for Cape of Tides. Our second gun we've again talked about is Sword Explosion, another gun that's going to be dealing lightning damage. On top of that, it's a Torg where our stuck swords are going to be dealing extra damage every time we stick our bullets to enemies. Now another gun that I really love is the Spriggan. Make sure that the Spriggan has frost damage, but this is going to work really well with our Cape of Tides. And finally, the White Rider. I wanted a gun that deals poison damage. The White Rider does that, so our poison damage can go through our enemy armor a lot easier. Two guns that you can utilize for this build that also work really well is the Message which is a Tor gun. This tears through enemies. It deals poison damage. You can also use the Live Wire, a gun that deals lightning damage that works really well with the Cape of Tides. So those are two other great guns as well that you can utilize with the build. The rings aren't going to be as important. I have the Silicone Ring, which is while health is above 50%, effects are increased by 33%. And the Class Ring, while action skill is cooling down, effects are increased by 50%. Mace Wardu is a really great shield to have on this build. Enemies who deal melee damage to the Fate Maker while warded take melee damage based off of the Fate Maker's equipped melee weapon. So that's going to be great to combine with our Diamond Guard as well. We also have a 15% chance to absorb bullets, allowing us to be a little bit more defensive and 
We also get a regenerate 5% of our maximum health per second while the ward is full. Now, we've already talked about Cape of Ties, but this is absolutely a necessity for this build. Critical hits have a 25% chance to create a Water Nova that applies soak to targets. We are critical hitting our enemies all the time, so we're going to be soaking our enemies all the time. Now, this also increases the duration of all soaked effects by 50%. And our soaked enemies are going to take 150% damage from lightning and frost damage. For the necklace, I have the Black Guard's Thurge of Adventure. Whenever a spell you cast, reduce your remaining action skill cooldown by 20%. Our action skill cooldown does have a very long cooldown, so this is going to reduce it every time a spell is cast. This also increases our spell damage by 20% or 30%. Finally, I have the Jacketed Dazzler. This is great with the build because it's dealing lightning damage. It also has a fairly quick cooldown, so it combines well with this. Every time we cast a spell, we reduce our remaining action skill cooldown by 20%. And this is multiplied by 7, has a bunch of projectiles, and can hit a lot of enemies that are soaked. So now that we've talked about the setup, let's get into some more gameplay and talk about why I love this setup. There are a lot of different gun and equipment combinations that you can utilize for this build. This build is really focused on damage output and gun damage output with critical hits and critical damage. Now, because we do have the Cape of Tides, I highly recommend making sure that you at least have two guns that deal either shock or frost because that's going to play even better to the build on top of that you saw that i was utilizing the dazzler spell which deals shock damage the dazzler is nice because it can hit multiple enemies but i would highly recommend utilizing a spell that deals shock or frost as well you should have at least one gun that deals poison damage so you can tear through armor. I prefer the White Rider, but I mentioned earlier that the message is also a fantastic gun that you can utilize, but utilize your favorite poison dealing weapon. I also like to sometimes, most of the time, utilize a gun that deals dark magic damage because I'm not healing up a ton. Maced Wardu is really nice for that, does heal me up, but because it doesn't always activate, I also like to have a gun that deals dark magic so I can suck the health out of my enemies as well. This is a fantastic build. It's absolutely epic, and I've been completely tearing through Chaos Chambers with it. But I'd like to know your opinion on this build if you're using something close to this Stabomancer Spore Warden build, or if yours is completely different. I mentioned that the onset of the video there are a lot of different stabomancer spore warden combos that work really well in tiny tina's wonderlands so i want to hear your combos in the comments section i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you have a great rest of your day until next time peace